Hello and welcome to Beyond Today, the program that addresses the future of our community through conversations with people who are working today for a better tomorrow. In our last program, we talked about diversity and how we can embrace the cultural differences that make our community unique. Today, we will be exploring ways to make government more efficient, accessible, and responsive to citizen needs. I'm Ray Charmonte, your host for Beyond Today and Director of Comprehensive Planning and Community Design for the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission. We are very fortunate to have with us today three people who have unique perspectives on good government. Pam Iorio is Hillsborough County Supervisor of Elections. She is at the foundation of the election process. Prior to her present position, she served eight years on the Board of County Commissioners. During her tenure, she served as Chairman of the Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Commuter Rail Authority, Heartline, the River Board, the Tourist Development Council, and served on a host of other commissions and authorities. I'm glad you could be with us today, Pam. It's nice to be here. Warren Bourgeois sees government from a different perspective. He is president of Tampa Homeowners, an association of neighborhoods commonly referred to as THAN. Warren has been very active in issues regarding the long-range plan, zoning and development regulations, in addition to working with neighborhoods. Joining us later will be Virginia S. Rue, director of the Florida Institute of Government at the University of South Florida. In our vision for the future, our citizens said they want good government. They want everyone to take part in making decisions about our community's future. Right now, there is a perceived lack of responsiveness about government and how it responds to the real needs and desires of citizens. Pam, I'd like to start with you. Uh, you're kind of at the foundation of government with the voting process. Uh, right. Can you explain how you plan to get more people involved in this really fundamental process? Well, of course, we're talking about 1996, which is uh, the Super Bowl of elections. When you start talking about a presidential election year, the last presidential election year in November, Hillsborough County had an 85% voter turnout. And uh, I think part of that was attributed to, uh, of course, not only the closeness of the race, but the Perot factor. Now, this year, we expect an 80% plus turnout. And the interesting thing about 1996 is that we have a lot of new voters on the rolls, thanks to the National Voter Registration Act. And uh, since that act has been in effect in Hillsborough County, we have registered nearly 90,000 new voters in a year and a half. Now, the big question will be whether all of these or most of these new voters vote in November, and, um, uh, and, and, and that will remain to be seen. But, but my office tries to be very proactive getting information out into the public and uh, encouraging people to vote. And I expect to see uh, long lines at the polling sites uh, in, in September and November. So you think that the new uh, regulations, I guess, on voting are going to affect the number of people that are involved in the well, process? Well, uh, really the NVRA, or Motor Voter is what it's uh, often nicknamed, has really changed the way people register to vote. It, it is now so easy to register to vote that you have to want to not register to not be registered. I mean, you can pick up a form at so many locations. You can even call and say to my office, uh, please send me a form. Uh, and you register to vote, and most of people do in Hillsborough County. 62% are now registering when they get their driver's license renewed or they get it for the first time. So we are seeing a lot of new voters on the rolls. Well, that's, that's encouraging. Warren, you're somewhat involved in a different way through the neighborhood associations. Um, how do you try to get more people involved, I guess, in that process, which is at a little bit deeper level of government? Well, as you and I have talked in the past, we've there's a grassroots Thing. We need to get down down into the neighborhood and, and motivate people to get involved in government. One of the things that we're hoping to do in this coming year is, is to, to reach out and help neighborhoods that aren't organized get organized. Unfortunately, it's the neighborhoods that aren't organized that need the most help, and therefore we're trying to do that. You know, we have an apathy problem, and um, it's a perception problem. A lot, a lot of time people down at grassroots level feel that their government is not theirs. They, they really don't want to participate because they feel that they have no effect. Uh, things like motor voter are kind of reaching out and getting into that grassroots and maybe changing some of that process. But we need to get people more involved in the day-to-day -day operation of their, of their government. After all, it is their government. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the kinds of things that we're going to be working on this coming year, trying to reach down and help people uh, who aren't part of the process become part of the process. 
I think sometimes people feel like government has roadblocks to their involvement. In your experience with neighborhoods, how do you feel like about that? I mean, do you feel there are roadblocks that government has to citizen involvement? And if there are, what can we do to eliminate them? Well, unfortunately, as I quite often say, perception is reality when it comes to that sort of thing. The first time a, a person has some interaction with government and gets turned off, then they're they're put off and don't want to do it again. Uh, if it's if it's nothing more than calling to try to get a pothole fixed in the street and they get the bureaucratic run around or something like that, that's a turn off. That's a roadblock. And we have to overcome that. And that's that's something that uh, requires a lot of communication. That's one of the things that we're trying to do with the neighborhood organizations is is be the conduit between the person in the neighborhood through the neighborhood associations to the government and vice versa. Get get the word going both ways try to uh, facilitate uh, communication. Uh, that's one way to overcome the, the, that kind of problem. And, and it's, it's not something that's easily done. You know, we're, we're, we're struggling to do that. So in a way, the neighborhood associations can become a tool, I guess, to help, help other people work through. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, uh, quite often, uh, we have people, I mean, I, every day I get a phone call from somebody who's per, usually not part of a neighborhood association and say, hey, I got this problem out here. Tell me how I can how I can fix that. And the first question I ask, well, what neighborhood are you in, and do you have a neighborhood association? If you do, I tell them to go through the neighborhood association because there's a there's a power there in a neighborhood. If there isn't a neighborhood association, then I said, well, maybe maybe you're the person to help start one, and we'll be happy to help you. In fact, we're building a kit now to to uh, help people start neighborhood association to make it a little easier. Great. Pam, there's a whole discussion of ethics in government. There, there seems to be a perception that uh, government doesn't have the ethics that it had in the past. Do you think that's just a perception, or do you think that's reality? Well, I, I, I've always thought that government is, is all of us. I mean, there, mm -hmm. and, and I think one of the uh, problems we've had over the years is this concept that somehow government is some, something other than, than all of us. Uh, government is made up of people. It's made up of society, and uh, you uh, you have your career people in government, and then you have your elected individuals who are your neighbors, your the people you run into the grocery store, people at the PTA meeting. We are all government, and as in terms of having an ethical problem in government, it, it's as much as the ethical problem in society in general, because government is a direct reflection of society in general. So, and which is why when I talk to many people about government and, and why they should be involved and particularly talking to younger people about voting, I always try to make that point to them that government is only as good as you make it. Uh, it's not some creation out there, some, some uh, you know, alien being. It is all of us put together. Uh, how do you make government better? Well, you make government better by electing good people and by insisting that your government operate in a way that's efficient and service-oriented and that your government is doing things that a government is supposed to be doing. Uh, but it's really up to all, us, all of us as citizens to, to take at least some level of interest in our government in order to make sure that it is doing all of those things. And so I always think that well, we do see problems in government all the time. Um, and occasionally someone being let off and to, to prison because of some wrongdoing. Just as we see in the general larger society, in the business community, in, in all different sectors, we see people who have ethical problems. And so I, I really think that in our quest to make government better, uh, what we need to do is involve more people in the process so that, so that there's not a general sense that somehow government is removed, that it's some, something that we can't be close to, that we can't change. We should always feel that we can change government. Mm -hmm. It almost seems to me that there's actually more safeguards uh, as far as ethics in government now than there might have been 50 <coughs> years ago. I, I don't know if you agree with that. Sure, or. I think so. I mean, any time if you looked uh, in, at history in the United States, uh, you'll see that there have been problems in, with government officials and in government bureaucracy since, since uh, our form of government was created. And if anything, I think today we do have, uh, first of all, we have the watchdog press, which is essential. And then we have, we have, through campaign finance laws and through other laws that have been passed uh, regulating conduct of public employees, we probably have more regulations, laws on the books today 
that help govern uh, conduct than ever before. Although I think no matter what you have uh, on the books, it's got to come from within. And the key is you have to have people who are dedicated to public service mm -hmm. and have high ethical standards that are from within, not something that's regulated by uh, from 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 uh, from a law. I mean that 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 doesn't make an ethical person when you have to when you're doing something only because it's written in a law book. Mm -hmm. Uh, let, let, me, let me pick up on that because I think some things you just said it was, relates back to what we were talking about earlier. We deserve what we get. And if there's apathy, no one's paying attention to what we're getting. If we don't like what we're getting, then it's up to us to fix it. And as Pam said, these people are working for us. You know, and if they're not doing what we want them to, we need to let them know. That's one of the things in the neighborhood movement we're trying to do. We quite often go to city council and say, this is what we think needs to happen. This is th these are our priorities. And, and, and a lot of times we're telling uh, city council and the mayor something that they really don't know. That mm -hmm. you know, they don't know that that is the priority. They, they're off on something else. Uh, so we, we get the, the government we deserve, and if we don't like it, it's up to us to do something about it. As Pam's saying, it, it comes from the grassroots. Do you think people That's maybe right. expect too much from government and, and some more personal responsibility needs to, again, become part of our system? Uh, no, actually, I think I think our, <laughs> we've diminished what we expect from government, and maybe that's part of the problem. We're not, we don't get as much as we should. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we we've got to get people involved in day-to-day -day, uh, watchdogging mm -hmm. the government, mm -hmm. if you will, paying attention to what the government's doing, and when it's not doing what you want it to, then. It's not just fair to criticize. It's f you have to get involved. You mm -hmm. have to go say, "Hey, this you're not doing this right. Here's my suggestion, and let me help you try to do it right." And, uh, and the neighborhoods, uh, through the neighborhood organizations, have been doing mm -hmm. that. We've we've come to, we've come to the table. We sit down at the table when, uh, as you know, when we worked uh, the right. recent zoning, uh, Chapter 23. We sat down and went through every change, word by word. And where there was something we didn't think was right, we said it, we didn't think it was right, and it. it if, if they agreed, they changed it. If they didn't agree, then we took it to city council, and of course that's what they get, they get paid the big bucks for. They got to make the decisions. They had to hear both sides and decide. And when the process was over, we had a big stake in, in how the new zoning regulation turned out. We're doing that all the time now. We're, doing, we're, we're starting a, the review process on another one of the city codes. So mm -hmm. it's an ongoing thing, and we participate, and uh, that's the way it should, should be. I, well, I, I tend to think, in, in picking up on what you said, Warren, that. If, if people are frustrated with government, at least locally, I think it's because government tends to move away occasionally from mm -hmm. delivery of basic mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. I really think most people believe that government exists to provide basic services, and, and, and they expect that. And it's, it's not any great expectation, it's just pretty basic expectations. Right. And I think what you both have really said is personal responsibility of involvement in government Absolutely. is important. I'd like to thank Warren Bourgeois for joining us today. We will be right back and uh, have you meet Virginia Rue with the Florida Institute of Good Government. The Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission. The Planning Commission is a consolidated city county agency responsible for the planning in unincorporated Hillsborough County and the cities of Tampa, Plant City, and Temple Terrace. The Planning Commission is the official land planning agency for all local governments in Hillsborough County. The Planning Commission was created by a special act of the Florida Legislature as a consolidated city-county agency. The members of the Planning Commission are business and community leaders who are appointed by the locally elected governments, four by the County Commission, four by Tampa City Council, one by Plant City Commission, and one by the Temple Terrace City Council. Some of the Planning Commission services include land use studies and counseling, transportation, population and demographic analysis, urban design, research, development code reviews, and special planning library. The Planning Commission meets every second Monday of each month at 2 p.m. in the Planning Commission's boardroom on the 18th floor in County Center. For more information on the Planning Commission, Write to the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission, 601 East Kennedy Boulevard, 18th floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602, or call 272-5940.
Your vote is your voice. If you don't register and vote, your voice will not be heard. It begins with you, depends on you, and it never ends. Recyclable paper containers and newspapers are needed because they can be recycled again and again, coming back to life to serve us in many new ways. Recycling, it's the right thing to do for everyone, every day. For more information, contact your local recycling coordinator. It's in your hands. Recycle and keep Florida beautiful. Welcome back to Beyond Today. I'm your host, Ray Shermonti, and we've been discussing the way government works and what makes good government. Joining Election Supervisor Pam Iorio and me is Virginia Rue from the Florida Institute of Government. The Institute was created in 1981 by the Florida Legislature and the Board of Regents to provide assistance to cities, counties, and special districts in the area. Jenny, this exposure to a wide variety of governments and agencies must allow you to see solutions to common problems. Uh, what can Some you tell us about yeah. that? Well, um, I think uh, one of the things that I'm seeing is one of the problems in government is there's a, a large demand for services and an increasingly uh, lower amount of revenues to support the services to meet those demands. And I think that there's a lot of agencies out there vying for the same tax dollar, so to speak. Um, I think that uh, in the same sense that um, people are feeling that government is basically a, uh, a hole, a big black hole in which the money is put into, but they never see what happens to it after that. They never see any real results of the spending that government does. So I think one of the solutions might be for government uh, is to probably spread the word about themselves a little bit more, somewhat like you're doing here today, to promote themselves and to explain to the citizens out there what they're all about and what the good things are that they're doing. I think government agencies often have to react to bad publicity and, and counteract some of the charges that are made against them. And uh, that's necessary too, but I also think that more can be done in telling the good story and telling the things that they're doing that help the citizenry and help save the tax dollars. And, and I think with more of that, I think it would help uh, in, in rallying, rallying the, the people behind the government agencies themselves. That's an interesting point because many times in talking to citizens I find that they don't understand exactly how things mm -hmm. actually work and That's maybe true. that information would be helpful. Pam, I wanted to talk a little bit about technology and voting. Um, we see all this computer kind of society occurring. Uh, how do you see that affecting voting in the future? I mean, will we be doing it in a different way? Well, probably, <laughs> probably. What might um, that be? There's already greater technology than what we use in Hillsborough County. In Hillsborough County, we use a punch card system that was first introduced in 1976, so it's 20 years old. It's not high tech, but it is accurate and it works. It's pretty labor intensive, but it works. Um, the technology is certainly there uh, to do a lot of, to, to vote in a lot of different ways. And if you look to the next 50 years, you can do all kinds of voting. And there probably will be other systems of voting that are introduced. Uh, one of the things, though, that I think uh, sets voting aside and it, it makes, makes it a little, in a little different category in as much as we may not always keep up with technology is uh, the need for some proof of your vote, some paper ballot, something you can go back to in case of a recount and say, let's do a hand recount, like we had to do in 1994 when there was a state house race where there were only 20 vote uh, difference between the winner and the loser, the Ron Glickman Faye Culp race. Uh, at that point, you have to go in and say, all right, let's pull the ballots from the precinct and count some of them by hand. And then once you do that, all parties leave happy and the one who didn't win is satisfied that everything was, was fine. With some of the technologies that are available, you can certainly have a very fancy way of voting, but you may not have that degree of um, a backup that you can go back to and say to a candidate and their supporters, look, we've got the evidence here. And that's why I think that in voting, it's always going to lag a little bit behind technological advances, not because those advances aren't there, but because uh, voters have a different expectation 
uh, from their election supervisors in terms of what kind of records we have of their vote. Uh, not of any individual vote, but of the collective vote. So it's an interesting issue. Yeah, I, that's interesting because I, had, I can just imagine somebody challenging a computer malfunction, and that is probably why it is important, maybe that it does lag a little bit to a really comfortable with the technology. Right. Virginia, you talked about a little bit of the mood of the voters. I, I'd like to pursue that a little more. Um, do you think it's just the idea that government is a black hole, or is there more to, in your surveys, what mood of not just voters but citizens in general? Is it more than just that black hole concept? Well, I, th I think that there's a more that to that. I think that um, one of the things that I, th I think is important is that, and, and I see that governments, some governments do this, not all governments do it, but is to putting forth a plan of where you're going to spend your money and following through the, with that plan. I think that the voter out there has oftentimes voted for something and found out that whatever he thought he was voting for didn't actually happen, wasn't actually accomplished, was the money, the tax dollar he might have been voting for was diverted to something else that he didn't agree with at the time. So I think that we have to be cognizant of that uh, when we're looking at what we're going to do in government and make sure that we set aside specific objectives and goals and follow through with those goals and, and make sure that if we say we're going to try to accomplish something, we accomplish, accomplish it or else we look at why we didn't and, and try to figure out a different way to do it. Well, I think probably a local example of that has been the whole issue with the lottery right. and the school funds and the perception that that somehow mm -hmm. wasn't followed through upon. Pam, uh, getting back to technology a little, not so much voting, but with your experience as a county commission, I guess technology can uh, influence citizen input in other ways. How, how do you see that maybe changing in the future as far as people participating in government, not just in voting, but just in citizen participation with well, technology? Ray, you might remember the year that I was chairman of the county commission was the year that we instituted the uh, televising of commission meetings. And that's when the length of the commission meetings went from five hours to ten hours in length. <laughs> Uh, but at any rate, that at the time was considered uh, really innovative. I mean, we were actually going to be on TV. Now it's considered, well, now that, what was it, nine years ago, it's uh, just an everyday occurrence that you can flip on the television set and watch uh, your city council, county commission, school board, and, and everything. Uh, and people actually do watch it, and it's good. Now, they may not sit and watch it continuously, but as people are flipping channels, they do watch it. Uh, the internet is, um, my office uh, is, next week unveils its internet page. Most government offices have internet uh, web pages now. Uh, although I still believe that the best form of communication uh, that, that government can do is to get out where people are. Uh, I felt that way as a commissioner. I feel that way now in my current position. Uh, I really believe that officials with government need to go out to the neighborhoods. Uh, taking their show on the road, go out to neighborhood meetings, uh, speak to people, uh, to what they're hear, what people are saying to them about individual concerns. So while I do think that technological advances are great and there are many things in the future that are going to help interaction between the citizenry and, and the public, I mean citizenry and, and, and their government, uh, nothing really beats uh, that personal interaction, including having someone there to answer your phone call, which I I believe is the greatest negative um, view that people have of government that I often, often hear, that when they call, there's no one ever there to answer their phone call, that in county government, everyone is always in a meeting, or generally, and, uh, and that, you, of course, with voicemail, you, you, know, you feel like it's going into some great lineup of phone calls never to be returned. You know, it's the personal touch people want with government. They want to see you at their neighborhood civic meeting, and when they call, they'd like to, have to speak to a real person. And so I really view it in a little bit more basic light mm -hmm. in terms of how we ought to communicate. Well, I think that's interesting because it brings in the conflict between the human touch and technology and how you balance the two out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Virginia, I'd like to know about the Florida Institute of Good Government. Tell us what that organization does and about uh, its purpose. Well, it's statewide. Uh, we're an affiliate of the uh, Tallahassee office, and we're located at the University of South Florida. There are 10 affiliates throughout the state. And we're involved in uh, uh, organizing and uh, uh, groups of people to do some of the things that you were talking about today. We've done quite a lot of that in, in all of our affiliates. Uh, 
My institute's been uh, very active in putting forth strategic plans and helping facilitate citizen groups to talk about what they want for their government, how they want to prioritize uh, the goals and objectives for the community, what, they, what their vision is for the community. We do some of that across the state. Other institutes are involved in that. We do a lot of um, management development training. Uh, we have at the Institute uh, here in Tampa an Executive Fellows Program that's been quite successful. It just completed its 10th year. And uh, I think what we have been able to accomplish in that is bringing people together, other governments, where they communicate with each other, where you have uh, someone from a rural county communicating with someone from a more urban county or city or government agency, and you have, um, say, a fire chief talking to a city manager. And I think that's really important. They find out all about each other's situation and accomplishments and problems, and, and they, they they get a very good network to, uh, to continue the communication process. Um, so I think, and, and also what we do try to promote as much as possible is that they need to involve the citizen in the decisions that they make as a manager, as a leader of local government. So. I, I, I guess I begin to see this whole concept of facilitating citizen input becoming more prominent is, uh, yeah. with professional facilitators. I mean, do you definitely see that as a trend in oh, the yeah. future? Oh, mm yeah. -hmm. We, we do quite a lot of that, and, and other agencies do also. And it, it is, there are a lot of groups out there that are involving the citizen in making some of the decisions that are critical to the community, and I think that's ever so important. And I also think it's real important for the communication to go not only locally, but to go across boundaries and to have the, the counties talk to each other and have the cities talk to the counties and the state governments in, involved and and there's a lot of facilitation of that process that's right. opening up a lot well I'd like to thank both of you for being on the show today okay. and uh, Pam Ioria Warren Bush and Virginia Rue for uh, being with us and helping us talk about how we can make government more efficient and more accessible and responsive to citizen needs Please join us next month when we'll talk about how to cultivate prosperity in our community. We'll be discussing how we can increase our economic opportunities in Hillsborough County for our citizens. Thank you for tuning in.